Expelled. I still can't believe I got expelled. Well, where will I go now? A few, de a few days after you were expelled, you and Julian are standing in the parking lot staring up at the facade of your new school. You ready? Ready as I'll ever be. Marching past the crowd of students, pointing and laughing, you pass through the school gates and under the sign welcoming you to Hearst High. Never thought I'd end up back here. Honestly, I can't believe Hearst even admitted us. I mean, seeing as how we're black market fireworks, kit, kingpins at and all? We're not, Julian. Razor and Jack are not getting away with framing us. We're gonna clear our names. You stop by your locker, several of your new classmates walk by shooting you dirty looks. I love the grit, the whole never say die attitude. Dennis, I really do. I really, I do, but come on. Between the fireworks on the float and the ones in our lockers, I mean, they even photoshopped those pics and registered that site in Nishan's name. We should have figured they, <clears throat> we should have figured they would, they, we should have figured they wouldn't just sit back and wait for us to catch them. They got to us first. They won. This isn't our school, Julian. We don't belong here. How can you just give up like this? I'm just making the most of my situation. I have, I have to. If I still want to, if I still want any shot at a D1 scholarship, think about it. I'm not starting from scratch. Not even second string behind Max anymore. I mean, they're making me try out again. I'm not giving up, Dennis. I'm just moving on. The bell rings and the crowd and the crowds in the hallway start to thin as students find their first classroom of the day. I'll see you at the school. Keep your head up, okay? Julian looks at you for a long second, then heads off down the hall. Someone slams your locker shut with a loud bang. Well, looky here, it's Dennis. Oh great, my welcoming committee. In the halls of Hearst High, Max leans against your locker, smirking. Heard you got expelled from your own school, Dennis. Didn't even know that that didn't even know that was possible. Did you, babe? Max turns to the girl beside him. Lacey leers at you with a snick, sickening grin. Ugh, perfect. Just when I thought Hearst couldn't get any worse. Me? You're the disgrace now, Dennis. You went around ratting on us like a little snitch, but the whole time you were the real bad apple. It wasn't me. Now back off. Lacey leans in, sneering. You're not you're not at your school anymore, Dennis. You don't you don't rule these halls. We do. And I'm going to make sure every day of your life here is an absolute nightmare. Now scurry off, Dennis. You don't want to be late for class, do you? You sit through your first few classes at Hearst all alone. Your history classmates ignore you, ignore you, refusing to team up with you for a group project. Really? Your group is full too? What a coincidence. In math class, someone trips you as you walk to your seat. Oh, come on. There's no way you were scratching your legs. When you get to the homeroom, you find Max sitting in the back of the classroom. He shoots a paper airplane at you. You hear your classmates giggle. Eat my cool. You silently open up your textbook, ignoring Max. Ugh, you're so boring. Disgusted, Max proceeds to chunk paper airplanes at another classmate. During English class, Max gives a presentation on Shakespeare. And that's why Hamlet is the most boring play of all time. Duh. This just gets up and applauds, beckoning the whole class to join in. You gotta be kidding me. When it's finally time for lunch, you head to the crowded cafeteria. You approach a table full of fashionable preps. Hey, mind if I eat lunch with you guys? The preps reject you, telling you to eat with your own kind. You spot a group of football players sitting in the back. Before you can even ask, the jocks shoo you away. They laugh at you as you back off dejectedly. Across the cafeteria, you spot Kara sitting with the cheerleaders. She shifts to make room for you. As you head over, another cheerleader slides into that seat, shooting you a withering glare. Dot, dot, dot. You end up eating your lunch alone in a bathroom stall. You look down at the tray in your lap and shake your head. All on the first day. Dennis just survived the first day at a new school, and it was the worst. Has that ever happened to you? You and Julian walk out of your last class together, exhausted and miserable. Told you her sucked, didn't I? You were right. This girl in my chemistry class sabotaged my strawberry DNA experiment and the teacher's favorite Max so much. Don't get me started on that guy. He threw my PE uniform in the trash and the only spares they had were smalls. The short shorts, the shirt hiked up. Not a good look. I can't, I can't tell you how bad I wanted to bust his jaw, but it's, it's just, it's not worth it. I can't make things harder for me here. I'm sorry, Julian. It's fine. I just got to grit my teeth, keep my head down and keep going just like on the field. Well, one day down and only, uh, how many days until graduation? My day's not over yet. Still got football tryouts, remember? They're just going to put put you on. Nah, they're just going to put you back on the bench, Julian. Yeah, I know how it's gonna go, but what other choice do I have? Shoulder slump. Julian heads off to a football practice. As you cross the parking lot, you see someone leaning against your car. Hey there, Dennis. Razor, you got a lot of nerve showing your face here. You find Razor waiting for you in the Hearst parking lot. How was school, Dennis? Would have been better if you hadn't gotten me expelled. Don't blame it on me. You had it coming. The police, Professor Ed, when someone's going to figure out you're behind the fireworks, you won't get away with this. 
No idea what you're talking about. I'm just a guy chatting with an old friend. Drop the act, Razor. Razor shakes his head and smirks. You could have just taken your community service and detention and this would have all and this all would have gone away, but you had to push things and look where it got you. Look where it got everyone who trusted you. Your friends always seem like they'd follow you to the end, and this time they actually did. They have you to thank for leading them there, especially Wes, who wasn't even part of all this. You're not getting away with it, Razor. You will answer for what you've done. What will you do, Dennis? Convince your friends to join you in another crazy scheme after all you put them through? Just stop. Besides, whoever runs the fireworks operation, I've got a feeling he has his wares locked up somewhere nice and safe. You'll never find any proof. Don't inflict more pain on your friends any more than you already have, I mean. Razor hops onto his motorcycle and speeds away. Dennis ran into an enemy in the parking lot, but who left with the upper hand? As you watch him rev his motorcycle in the distance, Rez Razor's mocking words echo in your head. Your eyes fall on the football field where Max marshals a horde of freshmen through brutal workouts. Among them, Julian grinds his way through a set of 100, set of 100 push-ups, sweat glistening on his furrowed bra, brow. What have I done? You climb into your car and leave Hurston in your rear view. You're driving along when something catches your eye. You slam on the brakes, stopping in front of a massive self-storage center. Razor's words float back into your mind. Besides, whoever runs the fireworks operation, I've got a feeling he has his wares locked up somewhere nice and safe. Wait a second, that's it. Razor has his fireworks locked up somewhere. If I can find his storehouse and link it to him, we can clear our names, but I'll need some serious brain power to figure out how. You park your car and fire off a text message. Deshaun, where are you? Welcome to my new academic milieu. An hour later, you're sneaking into a packed lecture hall at the, community lo at the local community college. You find Deshaun sitting alone in the front row and slipping to the seat next to him. The professor points to a detailed diagram of a liver. Hey, Deshaun, whoa. What class is this? Advanced human Psy physiology? Psychology? Physiology, I think that's what that is. Advanced science, huh? That's right up your alley. It's fascinating, but I wish I had friends to share this knowledge harvest share this knowledge harvesting session with. Look around the lecture hall at Nishan's classmates who are all older than him by a few years. Nishan meets your gaze. The age gap isn't exactly conductive to making friends. When I was at Hearst, I couldn't wait to get to college, but our school showed me how great a time high school could have could be. Even for a nerd like me, I miss that. I miss us. But I've accepted my fate. I shall slog through like Frodo on his journey to destroy the One Ring. But Nishan, what if you don't have to? I have an idea. You whisper to Nishan while he continues to take notes on his professor's lecture. Razor stopped by Hearst at the school today. You'd think he'd have more important things to do, like run his illegal business or kick small puppies. I know Razor's game. He's trying to make sure we don't come after him, now that we know how far he'll go to hurt us. But Razor's got me thinking. He runs a huge operation. He must have a large storage space for the fireworks. If we can find it, we can prove it was him the whole time. But the thing is, how do we find it? He said he made sure there's no paper trail. That's the thing, Dennis. There's always a paper trail. You can't track the fireworks origin just from their model names. After all, those are those are made from factories all over the world. But even factory will have slight variations in the chemical makeup of their explosive powder. You're saying if we analyze the powder and raise this fireworks, we can find out where they originally came from. Precisely. Knowing the original manufacturer will get us more information, maybe even a shipping address. There's no such thing as no paper trail. The only problem is we don't have any to test. The only ones we knew... The only ones we know of were in your locker, and Professor Edwin confiscated those. Then I'll just have to get them back. So to clear our names, you're going to steal fireworks. This seems like a paradox. I'm just borrowing them, only long enough to test them. Anyway, thanks. I knew you'd figure this out, Nishan. Just email me with instructions for how to test the powder, and hopefully I'll have, I'll have us out of this mess soon. What are you talking about, Dennis? I'm going with you. Out of the question, Nishan. Helping me once already got you expelled. If we got caught... I don't even know what they do to us. I'm not putting my friends in any more danger. Dennis, you want me to break into the most secure place in, in the school you're officially banned from, sneak past a thousand students that would recognize your face in an instant, steal a rudimentary explosive device, perform a delicate chemical compound analysis, and return it to its location all without being detected? I'd estimate your chance of success is less than 1 in 17 million. I know it's dangerous. That's my point, Nishan. My point is that you have slightly better odds with me on your team. I'm going with you, Dennis. But why? Nishan grips your hand because we're friends. Dennis sneaked into a community college class. Did Dennis learn anything? Nope, they were talking. So with you handling the science, how are our, how are our how are uh nope done. Better but still abysmal. <laughs> For an operation like that, we'll need a team and one absolutely perfect plan. Yeah, we're going to need West. Any idea where he is? Only whispers of rumors. I've heard 
Talk that he started working at the auto shop full time. Good luck getting him to sign on. I've got a feeling he's done playing the mastermind. You saw his face when he got expelled. He lost everything. Maybe, but a man with nothing to lose can be a very dangerous thing. We need the man with the plan. After Nishan hustles off to his next lecture, you head downtown to break out auto care. You find West there, working with several other mechanics on an engine. When he spots you, he strides over, streaked in grease and sweat. Dennis, what's up? Figure you're not here for a tune-up. Not today. Hey, isn't this the shop where your brother worked? The one, er, the one he stole from? The whole reason he's in prison? Yeah. The owner regretted pressing charges, thought my brother was a good kid, so he offered me this full-time gig. He probably pitied me, but honestly, I don't want anybody's pity. I'm good at this, better than I ever was at school. This is where I was always going to end up, with or without help. It doesn't have to be, Wes. Wes studies your expression, seeming to realize what you're about to say. He turns away, shaking his head. I can't, Dennis. I'm out of the game. Whatever you're thinking of, best forget about it. You got beat. I got beat. Okay, I understand. And you're right. It's too dangerous. The last thing I want is to drag you guys down with me any more than I already have. <clears throat> But I promise you, Wes, I'm going to make this right because this is not where we sh this is because this is not where we belong. You turn to start walking out of the garage behind you. Wes hangs his head, then calls after you. OK, Dennis, what's the play? At the auto shop, you explain your idea to Wes. So we need to sneak into our own former school, somehow get into Edmund's office, take one of the planted fireworks to the science lab where Nishan can magically conjure up their origin to track Razor and sneak it back into Edmund's office with nobody noticing. Sure, no sweat. You're kidding. Yes, I'm kidding. This sounds like the hardest scheme I've ever attempted, but it's only our, but it's our only option, so? Okay, Dennis, I'm in. One last job. Dennis is plotting something at an auto shop, but will the plan run smoothly or just combust? The next day at Hearst, you're putting your books back into your locker when you hear smug laughter. Dennis, lovely to see you fitting in at Hearst. By the way, you've got some gum in your hair. It's a good look for you. What? No. No, I don't. You frantically comb through your hair. <laughs> Made you look. Before you can respond, Lacey saunters away, still chuckling to herself. Just then, Wes suddenly appears beside you. Wes, hey, actually, I don't think you're allowed to be here. Please, this used to be my turf. I know my way around. I've been thinking about your plan, and it can be done, but there's one problem. Only one? You were right that Edwin still has Razor's planted fireworks in the office, but not for long. My sources tell me that a police that police evidence that a police evidence van is swinging by tomorrow at noon to gather them. And once they're removed and once they're moved to the police station, there's no way we're getting to them. Yep, so the clock's ticking. We're gonna need a ton of distractions to keep Edwin occupied. Too many for just you, me, and Ashan to handle. Think Catherine, Peyton, and Cole will help will be up for this? They might be too busy living it up at Athena to help. We'll just have to wait, did you say Co is at Athena? Get me out of here before I smash something. I'm dead, cuz. You wander beneath the marble archways of Athena Academy, searching for Cole, Peyton, and Catherine. Why won't anyone reply to my text? I'll never find them at this rate. Suddenly, a crowd of, crowd of uniformed girls surge past you. In the distance, you hear a loud commotion and a familiar voice at the center of it. Co? You go against the crowd, following the noise to the school gardens. You find Cole standing on a bench, shouting into a megaphone. Together, we can fight the system. It's time to tear down Athena Academy. Now say it with me. What do we want? Revolution. You're in Athena Academy Gardens where Cole is attempting to incite a rebellion. Catherine and Peyton are nearby trying to talk Cole down. And these uniforms? Just another way for the Athena administration to crush our spirit. Students quickly walk past without making eye contact. What's wrong with you people? Or should I say sheeple? Cole, you're going to get detention if you don't stop. No way. The rebellion can't be stopped. You saddle over to Peyton and Catherine. Dennis, what are you doing here? I've got a plan to prove Razor framed us. Wes and Sharon are in. We could use your help, but I have to warn you, it's gonna be dangerous. I don't know. You saw what Razor did to us when he came when we came after him. Who knows what will happen if we try again? Besides, Athena's not so bad. The uniforms are, are kind of cute. Remember there are <clears throat> Remember there are no parties. Remember there are no par parties, policy Peyton, and how they confiscated our phones. Okay, I admit it. This place is the worst. I'll do anything to get out of here. I agree. Being back here reminds me of how much I love being at our old school. Besides, I trust you, Dennis. You do? After everything that's happened? Of course. Overhearing this, Cole leaps off her bench and throws an arm around you. Dennis, you've got a plan to get us back in school? Yeah, I think we can't save it. Whatever it is, I'm in. You hear that? You blazer-wearing robots? I'm busting out of this joint. You see several Athena faculty storming down the hall towards Cole. Oh, uh-oh. Um, guys, we might want to get out of here. Like now. 
This is recruiting friends for a high stakes heist. Would you follow Dennis into danger? Already got us in trouble once. Might as well go ahead and go further. You and your friends meet Cole, meet at Cole's house to plan. All of you gather around the dining table, which is covered in blueprints of your school. So that's it. Cole, Catherine, and Peyton's distraction should be should be able to keep Edwin away from my office long enough for Dennis to run to the fireworks, to run to run the fireworks to and from the science lab. Do we think the three of us will be enough? <sighs> I can handle Edwin on my own. The rest of you are just bonus. Let's not get cocky, Cole. We're cutting this really co close. What about Mia and Ezra? Oh, or Autumn and Sakura. We have lots of friends who can help. No, they have to stay clean. They haven't been implicated. Yeah, implicated in any of this. It's bad enough we wrote Wes in last time and got him expelled. We do this without them. What about me? Everyone turns at the sound of Julian's voice. He appears at the threshold, Jim bats slung over his shoulder. Here you guys can use some extra manpower. Yay, Julian's back. Right on time. Glad you got my text. But Julian, are you sure? You said I know what I said. And a lot of me still thinks this is crazy. That if I still want it, that if I still want any chance at a football scholarship, I can't risk this. But if I stayed on the bench, if I let my friends fight my battles for me, what kind of teammate would I be anyway? Julian smiles and the rest of your friends share a knowing look. So, who's gonna fill me in? Time to break into my own school. Ah, uh, alright. Let's get you up. There we go. I'm a student gov. I'm going with my girlfriend Sarah. I'm gonna go with Harold. <clears throat> The next morning you meet your friends, you meet your friends a block away from your old school. Ooh, this is so fun. I don't think I've ever ditched class before. Man, you need to live a little. Okay guys, the police evidence van is already on its way. You need to head to your assigned quadrant right, right away. Don't let anyone see you. If our classmates see us, they'll talk to us and draw attention. Everyone got your walkie talkies? Good. Let's roll out. Dennis, stick with me. You and Wes keep your heads down as you make your way across campus. The quad is strangely empty of students. Why isn't anyone hanging out on the quad? Where is everyone? Your footsteps echo in, an, in the eerie quiet of the hallways. As you pass the library, the silence is broken by bickering. Enough! School is no place for pranks, Amelia. Excuse me? But someone's got to lighten the mood around here. You're so stuffy, you might as well have a cold. Boom. Mic drop. That's it. I'm hereby introducing a bill to ban all rubber chickens from school premises. Everywhere you look, your classmates are either fighting or giving each other the cold shoulder. What happened? Why isn't anyone getting along? You were the one who brought all the cliques together here, Dennis. But as far as they know, you turned out to be a criminal. How can anyone here trust each other anymore? You see Harold in the distance, shuff shuffling slowly. Dot, dot, dot. Hold on, Harold just walked past the railing instead of backflipping off of it. Wasn't Sean right about alien brain transplants? This is the new normal, Dennis. Not if I have anything to say about it. You and Wes sneak down the hallway to Professor Edwin's office, you peer through the window and see Professor Edwin sorting paperwork. From form 2B, I need a duplicate for this. Professor Edwin gets up to file a paper. You catch a glimpse of the fireworks in the bottom drawer of the filing cabinet. The fireworks, they're in the filing cabinet. You and Wes are crouched outside the Professor Edwin's office, about to set your plan in motion. All right, Wes, let's clear the, let's clear the road. Wes hisses into the walkie-talkie. Eagle One, you're up. Meanwhile, waiting just outside the packed cafeteria, Julian radios back. Uh, I'm not sure Operation Flying Tapioca is gonna fly. The lunchroom's full, but nobody's even talking. The cliques are all at separate tables. It looks just like Hurst in here. How am I supposed to get them into a food fight? If there's tension between the cliques, then let's use that to our advantage. Julian sneaks into the lunchroom and snatches a plate of meatball spaghetti, of meatball spaghetti off the cheerleader's table. He adopts a high-pitched voice. Take this, you dumb jocks. Julian herds of spaghetti, spaghetti across the room and it splats against the face of one of the one of Julian's football teammates. Everyone gasps. Food fight! Moments later, Edwin's desk phone rings. What? A food fight? I'll be right there. Edwin hurries out of her office, locking the door behind her and disappearing down the hall. Wes puts a crooked piece of metal, pulls a crooked piece of metal out of his out of his pocket and Jimmy's Jimmy's the lock. And we're in. I'm off to the top floor to keep lookout. Now you just have to find the fireworks, get them back to Nishan, and bring them back here before Edwin returns. I've got this. You turn to sneak into the office, but Wes grasps your hand. Grabs your hand. Dennis, you can still call this off. You're the only, you're the one handling the fireworks, which means you're which means you're at the most risk. If someone catches you, it'll still be worth it. I have to make this right. Wes studies your expression, then gives you a solemn nod. Good luck and thanks. Dennis is sneaking into their former school. Usually people try to sneak out of school. Wes takes off. Alone, you enter Edwin's office, quietly shutting the door behind you. You scan the tidy, tidy space. Okay. 
where were those fireworks? As you search, voices crackle over your over your walkie. This is Eagle One. Edwin shut down the food fight, but not before I got her with the custard pie. She's on her way back to her office. Get out of there, Eagle One. Now let's get now let's get her moving west. Eagle Two, hit the intercom. Oh, West, that's not for the that's not the code name I asked for. Fine. Party princess, you're up. Woohoo! Time for a school-wide dance party. Upbeat pop music blares over the school intercom. I've got eyes on Ed when she's heading for your location, party princess. Good work. Meanwhile, you frantically search Professor Edwin's office looking for the fireworks. The desk, the filing cabinet, uh, filing cabinet. You yank open the bottom drawer of the filing cabinet and find the fireworks. You radio, you radio in with your, yeah, you radio in with your walkie talkie. Got the fireworks. You're making good time. Now get them over to Nashawn ASAP. Get out of Edwin's office now. You grab one of the rockets from Professor Edwin's cabinet and tuck it under your shirt as you spin across the campus you report back to Wes. I've got the sample. I'm on my way to Nishan right now. Nice work, operative. Suddenly, the music playing over the intercom cuts out. Edwin's dealt with the PA already. She's moving too fast. Eagle 3, hallway duty. Let's put those track skills to work. Oh, Eagle 3? That's me. I'm on it. Oh, I see you, Catherine. You look so cute in your owl suit. Thank you. I borrowed it from Bridget. Here goes nothing. Go Athena, we got spirit. Yes, we do. We got spirit. How about you? As you cut across the quad, you see Catherine in the distance, running through the school in Athena mascot costume. You there. Come back here this instant. You duck inside the nerd hangout. Hello? Fireworks delivered for Nishan? Dennis, you made it. Not that I ever doubted you. I definitely was not stressed eating chocolate covered raisins while I was waiting. You hand Nishan the rocket and he instantly sets to work, dedically cutting open its fuselage. Fuselage? With a pocket knife, a fine black powder pours out into a vial. You really think you can figure out where these came from? Only one way to find out. You've got a problem. The police evidence van just pulled up to the bus stop. They're early. Edwin's heading there to meet them. Dennis, you've got to get those fireworks back to Edwin's office now. Deshaun hur hurriedly seals the rocket back up and tosses it to you. I've got enough of the stuff to analyze. Go, go, go. Deshaun pushes you out the door of the nerd hangout. Run like the wind or a cheetah, a cheetah made of wind. With only moments until Edwin returns to her office with the evidence tr crew, you sprint across campus with the fireworks. You report to Wes. I'm on, my way, I'm, on, I'm on my way back. Just hold them off a little bit more. You heard Dennis equal four. It's your time to shine. Finally. And by the way, if Peyton gets to the... If Peyton gets to be party princess, then I'm Firehawk. If Peyton gets to be party princess, then I'm Firehawk. In the distance, you hear the sudden sounds of tires schooling on, on asphalt. You look out to the parking lot where Cole is doing donuts on her motorbike. Nearby in the bus loop, Edwin and the team of evidence collectors gawk at the commotion. Who is that? What on earth has gotten into everyone? Enough already. Security, come handle this. I have to escort our guests to my office. A pair of school security guards ramp off the curb in a golf cart chasing out the co. She's not biting. I've got a bell. Good luck, Dennis. I'm almost there. If you're going to make it to Professor Edwin's office in time, you need to you need a shortcut. Take two rights, then hang a left. Past the teacher's lounge. Got it? Got it. Two rights, then a left. You turn right and head down the hallway. Uh, turn right again. You turn right again and see the teacher's lounge up ahead. You take a sharp left, skidding on the linoleum floor. You burst into Professor Edwin's office with minutes to spare. Yes! Made it in time. You quickly shove the fireworks back into the filing cabinet, then bark into your radio. Mission accomplished. I repeat, mission accomplished. Dennis just snuck into a teacher's office. When did Dennis become such a rebel? Wes radios in. Edwin's almost back to her office with the evidence team. Where are you, Dennis? I'm still inside. You need to get out of there, now. You freeze in place as the doorknob rattles. I gotta get out of Professor Edwin's office. You watch the doorknob turn, and you quickly duck under the desk. Professor Edwin steps into the office with the evidence team. Apologies for the delay, officers. The contraband is right here. Your heart pounds as Edwin's footsteps draw closer. From under the desk, you watch her walk to the cabinet and hand over the box of fireworks. Her legs move towards you, and as she pulls out the desk chair, about to sit down right where you're hiding, you hold your breath. Dot, dot, dot. Now, will that be all? Suddenly, you hear footsteps racing down the hall, and a familiar voice cries out. Professor Edwin, the football players are rioting. What? I already told them we can't install flat screens in the locker rooms. Again, my apologies, officers. I really don't know what's gotten into the students today. Follow me. I'll walk you back to your van. You stay perfectly still, listening to the footsteps as Edwin leads the police away. It's all clear, Dennis. You can come out now. Mia pulls you out from under Professor Edwin's desk. Saved your butt back there, Dennis. You're welcome. But how did you know I was here? 
Did Catherine or Peyton tell you? I warned them not to. Oh please, top 40 hits on the intercom, a food fight and parking lot stunts, an Athena Academy owl? Could it be more obvious that you guys were up to something? But hush, come here, come here. Mia pulls you toward the hallway and pushes you. You topple forward, right into a passing laundry cart full of dirty gym clothes. <laughs> what the? You pull a pair of shorts off your face and look up to see Autumn pushing the cart. She whispers to you, shh, Dennis, it's okay. We're getting you out of here. Autumn wheels you through a crowded hallway and out an exit behind the gymnasium where a van is idling. Get in, Dennis. You dive into the bed of the van. Autumn shuts the doors and Ezra cautiously drives away, waving politely to the police lingering in the bus loop. Soon Ezra pulls, in the, pulls up in Sakura's driveway and into the garage. You sit quietly in the bed of the van as the garage door seals you in. You hear Ezra get out, pace, the, pace around the van, and yank open the rear doors. And you find yourself face to face with Sakura. Welcome to the safe house. To air out a bad guy's dirty laundry, Dennis has to hide in a cart full of cart, in a cart full of dirty laundry. You hit level 31. You can now have one more hangout. You climb out. Of, you climb out of Ezra's van to find all of your friends waiting in Sakura's garage. Wes, Cole, Peyton, Catherine, Julian, you all got out. We had help. You turn to Ezra, Sakura, Autumn, and Mia who wait expectantly. Guys, thank you. I wouldn't have made it without you. Oh, we know. The question is, how come you left left us out of your plan? We could have helped you from the start. I couldn't risk bringing you down with me. I couldn't bear to see you guys expelled too. Dennis, don't you know by now? We're your friends. You've always been there for us when you when, when you need us. You've always been there for us. When you need us, we'll back you up. No matter what. All post high group hug. Peyton wraps you in a hug and all of your friends join in. You look around smiling and something dawns on you. Wait, where's Nashawn? Did he get out? Just then the door from the house. Yeah, just then, the door from the house flies open and Nashawn steps into the garage holding a printout. Nashawn, did you find the test? Do you know where Razor's fireworks are coming from? Please tell me we got to please tell me we got something out of all of this. Oh, we got something, alright. Nashawn hands you the printout. You scan it over. Whoa. You're reunited with all of your friends, but is that enough to bring Razor down? And what is Nashawn's breakthrough? Keep playing to find out. 